Welcome to No Tears for Black Girls. This episode, we have a story from our partners at datshot.com, along with their YouTube channels, Dats Hot Media and Dats Hot News. I'm Samantha Paul, and today we're discussing R. Kelly. In recent years, he's been subjected to numerous accusations of sexual misconduct and abuse. It has been said that he engaged in inappropriate relationships with minors, ran a sex cult, and groomed victims for sex. Just last month, Kelly faced multiple counts of criminal sexual abuse involving four victims, three of whom were underage at the time. Plus, obstruction of justice, multiple counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault, and other connected offenses. Despite these charges against him, Kelly refuses to take any responsibility for his purported actions, maintaining that the law has been twisted against him. Kelly had recently made a public statement regarding his conviction. In his statement, he stressed the importance of the 14th Amendment's guarantee of equal protection under law. Kelly claimed that he was not receiving this basic right, as police and prosecutors used the legal system to paint him in an unfavorable light. He also spoke out about his experience in the Metropolitan Correction Center in Chicago, where he claims to have been treated with disdain and cruelty, worse than even animals. He alleges that medical staff botched a procedure for treating blood clots in his legs, which left him fearing for his life. These claims have sparked serious doubt among civil rights defenders who now question whether Kelly has the same rights as other people in the criminal justice system. The ACLU is heading a probe into Kelly's accusations and has filed a complaint with the Department of Justice, charging that Kelly has been denied basic due process rights. As the ACLU's investigation proceeds, many are now asking if Kelly's assertions are real or just an attempt to avoid being held responsible for his suspected actions. Although the allegations against Kelly are grave, the legal procedure must be followed so that justice prevails. The Constitution protects certain rights for any individual, regardless of their purported crimes. The 14th Amendment affirms that everybody should be treated equally under the law and is entitled to due process and other safeguards. These protections must be upheld in order for justice to be served. If Kelly's allegations are true, then it is possible that the legal system is not adequately protecting his rights. This could lead to a miscarriage of justice and would set a dangerous precedent for other defendants in the criminal justice system. It is possible Kelly is utilizing the legal system to escape accountability for his reported behavior. He has declared that the law has been manipulated against him and has not owned up to any wrongdoing. If this is accurate, then Kelly is not only denying his victims justice, but also imperiling other vulnerable people by attempting to evade the law. Clarification is needed to grasp the charges against Kelly, and whether or not he is receiving the same rights as others in the criminal justice system. As the ACLU continues its research, we will be certain to keep you informed of any new developments concerning this case. Witness testimony has flooded the court proceedings, as people from all walks of life have attested to what they saw Kelly endure at Metropolitan Correction Center. A former inmate who served with Kelly recalled being horrified by the mistreatment he observed, such as guards dishing out verbal abuse and physical intimidation. Another long-term detainee noted how even food was used to punish inmates, a privilege withheld when someone couldn't follow orders or challenged authority in any way. The U.S. Marshals Service, responsible for operations at all MCCs, said any misconduct would be investigated and people found guilty would face consequences. However, many witnesses expressed disbelief as these conditions have been allowed to persist for years with no repercussions until public attention shifted to Kelly's case. Several correctional officers also came forward, exposing corruption among MCC Chicago staff. They revealed violations of protocol and ethical lapses that adversely affected prisoners who weren't famous such as Kelly. Kelly made a recorded phone call to WAC 100. In it, he details how legal rules were broken and bent to lead him to his 30-year prison sentence. He blames YouTube blogger Tasha Kay for part of the calamity. This is the audio recording of that conversation. If this disciplinary hearing officer hadn't illegally accessed all of my is, records... Is it loud enough? I don't know where it's playing from. Scanned them to her, illegally scanned them to her own personal Gmail account. Okay. Then illegally gave them to Tasha K. Yeah, crank that up. Then those records 
those communications between me and my other girlfriend would have never reached my girlfriend's ear or eyes for her to get pissed off enough to come to my visit the last time and curse me out, telling me she heard all of the phone calls and saw all of the emails, even phone calls between me and my attorney, she told me. And she wouldn't have been mad. Wait, wait, wait. bitch got the I ain't gonna call that bitch. But the lady, the officer got the, the lady got the recordings? This is your phone my, recording my, my girlfriend came to my, my visit, the last visit. Yeah. Okay, in 2019, and cursed me out, saying she heard me talking to my other girlfriend. Okay, and so what I'm trying to understand me, is... She heard me talking to my lawyer, saying I'm not leaving my other girlfriend for her. She had this conversation with me and snapped on me in my last visit and left. And after that, she went and was tested and started and joined the feds and was testifying against me. That's yeah. what happened. And I didn't know I didn't know how she knew those things. Everything she said, I said was true, but I didn't know how the hell did she know until three weeks before my verdict, which was in 2021, in the middle of trial. And then I that's started coercion, bro. That's <clears throat> that. Hey, that's co that's coercion all day. So his attorney came in to visit him and they got into some kind of argument and so she goes into his jail email and takes all of his emails and then what presents them to the prosecution no the his fucking, ex-girlfriend right no the prison guard prison guard okay. the prison guard who worked in the prison went into r kelly's emails 153 times and sent those emails to her personal email. Then went home and sent the emails to Tasha K. Mm. The prosecution gets a hold of them and approaches R. Kelly's girlfriend, right. the one that's visiting with him and standing with him, right? Uh -huh. And shows them all the emails of him emailing his other girlfriend. Mm, and that's how they turned her on him. She then turned on R. Kelly and became a witness for the prosecution. Mm. And she represented 95% of the case. Why did they go to Tasha K with this kind of information? I don't know, but let's continue. Okay. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So, you know, if the law hadn't broke the law, because I didn't find out about it to three weeks before the trial. If the law had broke, broke the law, law, then the law could have... The law, the law could have, could have worked in your favor. Exactly. So, uh, you know. So, how uh, important was her testimony? She was ninety-five percent of my case, bro. I told you that. Oh damn! She was the main witness, the star witness, and per my lawyers, she was the main witness in my case. Now, I know it's a lot of people out there that don't want to hear this, don't want to, you know, you know, don't, don't, may not like R. Kelly or want to listen to my music or may believe anything they hear about me or whatever. Don't but listen to that, bro. Don't but, listen no, but listen, that. listen. But at the end of the day, my constitutional rights are supposed to look just like everybody else's everybody constitutional else. rights. My due process is supposed to look like everybody else's due everybody process. Else there, due should process. Not, there should not be a celebrity version of the Constitution. Yeah, no, you're right about that. The law is not some remix they can just remix to their agenda, bro. The remix to their agenda. I should not be treated like yeah. some prosecutor's trophy, King bro, remix. and I'm just being real. The law broke the law. No, The that law makes sense. broke the law. And because the law broke the law, it ultimately got me where I'm at right now. Because if that officer hadn't given Tasha K my restricted jail records. What does restricted mean? That so means don't go in that area. That means don't mess with this. Yeah. She did it. And the search warrant says she did it. R. Kelly is not saying she did it. I'm going off of what the search warrant says. Search she warrant says, yeah. And that and search warrant was signed off by her own time, which is a judge. Huh? Yeah, the search warrant was initiated by their side, not yours. Right. And, you know, anybody 
to get involved and make the Department of Justice aware of these crimes, to get a transparent, thorough investigation into Officer A, sharing my jail records with internet blogger Tasha K, and who she shared them with. All emails, text messages, phone calls, computer traces must be fully investigated. And Merrick Gardland, U.S. Attorney General, the Department of Justice, 950 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C., 20530. Now, here's the case number for the, for the search warrant. The case number, so people can see it for themselves. And then, if you don't believe me, you can look at, at it yourself. The case give number is search warrant. Mark, give it to him. Two zero M one four eight. That's the case number. Search warrant. It's unsealed in the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division. Look, the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Sun Times put the article out about my jail records being stolen by Officer A on 9 7 was This call is from a federal prison. There was two newspapers that put the article out. I'm, I'm not, you know, listen, if, you know, people may say, well, he had his, ch his chance in court. He had a, a jury of his peers. First of all, I don't know about jury of my peers. I just know this. If the if the jury had known this, if they had known this because it had happened before they even picked the jury, and if that jury had known this, this would have went another way. But I feel like I shouldn't even went to trial because it happened in 2019 while I was in Chicago. Now, since this DOP officer has done this, she just retired. She was never charged. They only call her officer A. They don't reveal her name or nothing. Got you. Well, we able to go pull it, dig into it, see what's there. But nevertheless, it's obviously a case of coercion for them to sway a witness that was standing on your side to stand on the prosecution side. Which yeah, represented my girl was supporting me. She was yeah. supporting me 100% until she saw some damn emails. Six months worth of lovey-dovey emails. I'm going to keep it real. She saw six months worth of lovey-dovey emails between me and my other girlfriend. Or, or you know what the people going to say, or, or you know what the people going to say. They're all not learning this goddamn lesson just to be a one-woman man. Goddamn, he couldn't okay. do it on the street. Can't do it right behind the walls. You know right, but, you know, but, but, but at the same time, bro, when they say that, that's fine. That's okay. But at the end of the day, you don't go to jail for being a player. and You definitely don't do no 30 years. You got that right. Okay, so let's cut the right. bull crap, bro. Okay. You got that right. Yeah, I can learn my lesson, and I have learned my lesson. Believe me. But you don't learn a lesson for 30 years. No, you because got that a right. a girlfriend is mad because of another girl, so she'll get up on the stand and say anything. It's called woman scorn, bro. This ain't the first. Robert Kelly is not the first one to have emails and phone calls and text messages to another woman. There's no law against that either. My point. But there is a law against stealing information, so I want people to focus more on the law breaking the law. You don't break the law. You can't break the law to enforce the law. Thank you. You're right about that. I'm I'm thank that's you, because you, you, you can't do that, and that's what's been done. The search I warrant want... says it, not Robert Kelly. The search warrant said it, and I just gave the search warrant you know, number, but that's, yeah. it says, it. Got, all I'm trying to do is get the investigation. They won't, listen. they haven't shared the investigation. You feel you got to ask you that appeal, bro? Yeah, my lawyer says it's looking good. You know, she she believes a lot of stuff, believe in it, but there's other stuff that's done went on, man, during my whole trial before I had even went to trial. And that's the stuff okay. I wrote down. That's the stuff I wrote down that I wanted you to get. So I'm gonna read it off, man. Okay. Let me have an understand. You probably heard of some of this stuff, but I'm gonna start it off by saying this. And these things I just wrote. So bear with me, man. My my writing is terrible, but you'll get it. Go ahead. I'm listening. All right. The Fourth Amendment. The Fourteenth Amendment is equal pro is equal protection under the law. 
The Fifth and Sixth Amendment deals with due process. Everyone must have a fair process. There should not be a celebrity version of the Constitution and due process when it comes to going to trial. The law is not some song they can just remix to satisfy their agenda. And no matter what some people may think or believe about R. Kelly, they're entitled to their opinions. But I want people to remember this. Our constitutional rights are supposed to look just like their constitutional rights. My due process is supposed to look just like their due process. My equal rights, equal rights are supposed to look just like equal rights, meaning equal. Yeah, they're not supposed to uh, alter them because you're a celebrity. Right. Um, and if all my rights and due process can be violated and R. Kelly can't get an equal protection due process under the law, who can? Now, here are all the facts. These are facts. Back in 2019, four years ago, My private, my private jail records, my phone calls, emails, was accessed illegally 153 times by an unauthorized BOP disciplinary hearing officer, whom the government is identifying as Officer A. So this was a wiretap. A wiretap? It was a wiretap. Uh, no, she 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 went on a computer and um uh, and she she took them off the computer. This was before I had ever gone to trial, but while I was being held at the MCC in 2019 in jail, the BOP officer A was illegally accessing all my phone calls and emails, and she was doing it for six whole months. Officer A, she she also scanned 12 pages of my restricted jail records. She tore off every corner of every page where the dates and times would have been. And then she sent it to her own personal Gmail account. Oh, that's where it went wrong. Right. That's exactly. But she didn't stop there. Officer A then sent all of my jail records to a blogger named Tasha K, who stated out of her own mouth that she shared my jail records with federal witnesses in my New York and Illinois case. She said it out of her own mouth, and it's out there on the podcast and everything. Now, Officer A violated policy and procedure, but once Tasha K sent those jail records of mine to federal witnesses, it became federal crimes. And Officer A became an accessory before the fact. Aided and abetted Officer, she aided and abetted Tasha K. Officer A provided the tools for Tasha K to commit the federal crimes because Tasha K wouldn't have had my jail records to show federal witnesses yes. if Officer A didn't give them to her. Now, my question to you, uh, R, is these things we're talking about, <clears throat> yeah. do they have an effect on the charges that you have? Absolutely. Because in order to have charges, you have to have witnesses, right? Yep. Okay, so you can't have a, a witness up there that's been seen uh, six months worth of lovey-dovey conversations between you and your girlfriend and the witnesses up there is your girlfriend too and she's off because she didn't seen all of this this stuff that the BOP provided Tasha K with and Tasha K went and showed it to her can she? Nope, you're right. That's called a tainted witness, ain't it? Definitely. Well, where she wouldn't have seen those conversations and emails between me and my other, other girlfriend I mean, should I be in here 30 years because I was a being a player? No, nah, definitely not. And I tell people that. I tell people all the time, I said, listen, every state got different um, laws. And whether it's this case for, for your own personal reason, if the law stipulates in states that um, they can consent themselves at certain ages, that's just what that is. Like, the law. New York is 17, Jersey 16, Cali 18. I mean, different spots, different things. Yeah, yeah, every This call is from a federal prison. But not one state in America and nowhere else got a law that put somebody in jail because 
a witness is tainted and a girlfriend is mad or a guy's being a player because he got two girlfriends. No, and no, one, we, and, 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 and they shouldn't be on the stand. Okay, so I'm just going to finish it up and it's all good, but she ate it and abetted it. Okay, they, if, they, if they got you dead to the right or whatever, whatever they call it, then you shouldn't need a tainted witness that's been shown six months' worth of jail records, you know. You don't need that. But that's what they needed, and that's what they did. And they um, knew this, though. They knew this. Absolutely, because here's the deal, bro. Hell, I'm going to go off this paper. Hell with the papers. So here's the deal. 2019, this was reported. There was a search warrant done on this BOP officer, A. She was reported doing this in 2019. Now remember, I was in pre-trial. I hadn't even gone to trial. This lady was in, reported to the point that they did a search warrant on her computer, her laptop computer, and found out that she indeed did this. They found out that Tasha K indeed received this information from this BOP disciplinary hearing officer. This ain't just some uh, security guard. This is a disciplinary hearing officer, which is a, bu a judge in the Bureau of Prisons. She knew exactly what she was doing when she gave Tasha K this information. Tasha K knew what she was doing because she actually said it out of her mouth that she shared it with government witnesses in both my cases. And they did this prior to me even going to trial, which means I shouldn't even went to trial because my you girlfriend... Went to trial. Exactly, because my girlfriend, who, who became the witness... Working with the government, she did it after she saw this information between me and another girl, bro. Now, let's just keep this real, okay? This is common sense. This ain't nothing you got to go to school for. Everybody know what a scorned woman is and somebody that's mad and will get up on the stand and say anything about you because they thought because they saw some lovey-dovey conversation between you and another woman. And they knew exactly what they was doing when they showed it to her because my girlfriend, this witness, was 90% of my case. Oh, yeah. So you see nah, what I'm saying? It. Yeah, now nah, I get it. They needed to sway her. Exactly. She was all with me for six months after I got arrested. She was all on Facebook saying she's with me. I remember her. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So how in the hell within six months do she change like that? She came to my, um, if this hang up, I'm going to call you right back, bro. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. So she came to my my last visit, the last visit I saw her, cursing me out, saying she saw the emails between me and my girlfriend. And she was, I was like, how the, in my head, I was like, how the hell do you know that? Uh, you she know was that? quoting things I said. And then she so even they... said that she heard me talking to my lawyer on the phone. Don't lie, I know your voice. I mean, she snapped on the visit. After that, she left, went and started a fight with my girl, and then ended up with the feds. And then the feds got to me. cooperate and fabricate and say the shit. And, 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 and then I didn't, and I didn't, uh, I'm going to call you right back. It's going to hang up. All right, Michelle. This is No Tears for Black Girls, a true crime podcast with a purpose. Don't miss out on our weekly revelations that the mainstream won't share this Thursday and every Thursday thereafter. Tune in to any podcast streaming service to hear stories you won't believe.